Thanks, guys. It's great to be presenting here today. Um, love to be there in person. It's certainly a, uh, probably a better day than he's, he's here in Perth. Um, it's been a really busy time for the company over the last um, certainly 12 months. We've had a number of hostile takeover offers, so that's really been keeping us pretty um, occupied. But what I want to focus on today is, um, is our Sandstone Gold project, uh, some of the recent exploration results we, um, we've, we've recently released, and um, the big exploration program we've just, uh, just commenced as well. So we're located in um, in the East Murchison of Western Australia. So it's a great place to be. A lot of um, gold exploration going on at the moment. It's really, really uh, a busy time uh, in WA. We've got a very large strategic land holding. It's over 800 square kilometres of ground. It covers the entire, or the majority of the, 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 the sandstone greenstone belt in WA. It's, um, we're surrounded by a number of multi-million ounce mines and, uh, and deposits. Sandstone itself, it's had mining activity since the early 1900s. Um, and it's already produced over, over 1.3 million ounces of gold. So lots of gold in the system. Our resource currently sits at 331,000 ounces. We, um, we recently released some preliminary uh, metallurgical test work. It's highlighted that in the fresh rock, we've got over up to 96% um, recovery. So it's really, really encouraging that there's um, basically the, the mineralization there is, is, is uh, um, amenable to very simple CIL processing. Um, the resource itself, uh, as I said, sits at 331,000 ounces. There's a number of um, higher grade results that are currently outside of that resource. Um, the reason they're outside of that resource is just for the drill spacing. So we'll be looking to infill that um, and, uh, and grow that resource pretty aggressively. And one of the things I'll, I'll talk about shortly in the presentation is um, um, while we are in WA, it's, it's a very, very large greenstone belt, but we believe it's been heavily underexplored. There's certainly not much drilling below 100 metres. And, and that's where we see a significant amount of um, potential. Um, we're currently well funded, so probably in the strongest position we've been in the last um, 18 months. Um, we've got 5.5 million in cash and, and a big 30,000 metre drill program underway. So we're really hitting this ground pretty hard. So just quickly on the, on the corporate structure. Um, so 381 million shares on issue. We're currently trading about 12 cents. So market cap of about 46. Um, as I mentioned, 5.5 in cash. Um, you will see there's a small um, loan facility there, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and uh, so our EV sits at about 41 million bucks. We, um, we're very, very tightly held. The top 20 hold about 65% of the stock. Uh, you'll see Winsong there, which is one of my fellow directors, um, Mr. Terry Wheeler. He holds about 15% at the moment. Uh, fellow junior. Um, Middle Island Resources recently acquired 10% of the stock, and I'll, I'll highlight where they sit and, and I guess potentially the rationale for that. Um, GS Group also hold 10%, and we've got a, a fund out of Sydney, Harvest Lane, holding 6%. So very, very tightly held. I think the top 100 shareholders hold about 80% of the stock. So it's um, it's a very interesting and, and, and uh, contested um, uh, company at the moment. The um, So as I mentioned before, we have had some corporate activity um, part of the strategy around that was really to starve us of funds. It's, it's impacted our expiration um, to date. Um, Terry uh, Wheeler, who is um, on the board with myself, he provided a short-term medium, uh, short-term unsecured loan. That loan was enabled us to get through this year and sort of really um, highlight some of the drilling results that we um, released this year. Um, that loan will get paid back out of our funds um, in the next sort of month or so. We've, further, we've got uh, another 1.2 million coming through in options. Um, I expect at the end of this at the end of this week. So as I said, we're sitting, uh, we're located in Western Australia in a world class address um, sandstone. We're surrounded by a number of multi million ounce deposits, um, gold fields, egg news out to the the east of us, um, Romelius uh, at that Mount Magnet camp to the west. Um, Romelius actually trucked through our property. They're mining from the high grade Vivian's mine, so that goes all the way through sandstone. Um, to the, to the north um, there, there's also Gateway and Horizon, and then further north, both uh, West Gold's operations at Tuckabiana and Mika Thara. Um, down in the southwest, um, Kirkalocka, which is Adaman Resort, owned by Adaman Resources. Um, Adaman's, one of their major shareholders was Hadbrock, who were the last company to, um, to make a bid for us unsuccessfully. Um, you'll also see down there, right down there in the southwest is uh, Penny West, which was uh, now owned by Romelius, but pre previously Spectrum Minerals. So a lot of activity in the area. Um, we're surrounded by a number of um, development uh, or operating uh, mines, so lots of options for us to, um, to to look at where we 
once we've sort of grown our resource, what, what options are around how we process this. So certainly no rush to, to, to go down that path. And for us very much is focused on the exploration of, of what we consider a really exciting and major greenstone belt. So we're just zooming in now and I want to highlight the scale. So this is, you know, this is 10 kilometre scale here. So this is a, it's a major greenstone belt. Um, we're in a, we have a dominant ground position. We're um, surrounded by two major shear zones, the UME shear, which is running down the western side of the property and then the Edale shear on the eastern side. Um, as I mentioned, the, the greenstone itself, it's it had, had mining activities since um, the, since the early 1900s, um, it's produced over 1.3 million ounces. There's two high grade um, initially reefs that there were then um, open pit mine, Hacks and Arroyo. Both Hacks and Arroyo produced over 200,000 ounces at 24 grams and 15 grams per tonne each. Um, so very, very high grade. More recently, Troy Resources, they mined from Lord Nelson and Lord Henry and also Bull China. They were probably some of their most um, profitable mines in WA at the time and certainly very profitable for Troy. So, with, um, with Alto coming in, and we've, we've had the ground for a couple of years now, um, you can see one of the challenges, there are so many targets within this property and, and what we're highlighting here is just um, existing mines and then the red dots are currently where our, our resources sits between the Lords and then Indomitable and Vanguard camps. Um, it's, been, it's been hard for the company to, to, to how, look to how to prioritise onto, onto which target to chase first. Um, because there are so many, so many options, and I guess that's that's been um, part of our strategy over the last twelve months. Is really to sort of focus our exploration, um, and what we looked to do was, given that our exploration is not driven by any any sort of mill, uh, which is what Troy had at the time, so we we're very much focused on a lot of the oxide material um, at sandstone. So focusing very, very shallow, down to about hundred metres depth. Um, as soon as they were hitting fresh rock. They stop mining, which is exactly the story at Lord Nelson and Lord Henry. Um, we haven't got that mill, so we, our exploration strategy is not driven by a hungry mill. It's driven by by geology and, and, and targeting. So we've looked at um, from a prioritisation prioritization point of view where um, where we should focus our limited funds to begin with, and we're looking for big deposits. And you find big deposits um, in very close proximity to to big shear zones. So we sort of we're drawn towards this Edale shear on the on the eastern side of the property. It's a major shear zone, and um, and given the current resources that are sitting at Lord he Lord Henry and Lord Nelson, and bearing in mind when Troy were mining these, when they hit the primary um, rock, they stopped mining. So the mineralisation didn't stop; they just stopped because it's, it goes into that um, slightly harder primary material. So that for us was the the initial focus, um, and we wanted to see how how um, how how deep and how big this um, potentially could be. So just zooming down, and this is right down in the southwest corner of our property. So we're looking at the, we call it the Lord's Corridor, Lord Henry, um, which uh, it's currently got a resource of 69,000 ounces. It produced 48,000 ounces, mined down to about 50 metres of depth at 3.6 grams per tonne. Troy then moved up that corridor that discovered Lord Nelson up the north there. That's um, historically produced over 200,000 ounces at 4.6, mined down to about 90 metres. So we're looking at a three kilometre long corridor here. It's a large granodiorite intrusion. It's intruded between mafic and ultramafic rocks. And we're seeing most of the mineralizations associated on the contact on the eastern side of the granodiorite um, with where it hits those ultramafic rocks. Um, here you just, just see two images here of both Lord Nelson and Lord Henry. So zooming in, this is a 3D image of the Lord Nelson pit. So this pit is 500 metres long, it's 300 metres wide, and it was mined down to about 90 metres. You can see below the pit here, there's a lot of the existing resource that was left, which is in that primary zone. The key thing from this slide is to highlight this yellow dashed line is the lower resource mineral boundary. Now what that means is the current resource to find at Lord Nelson is 109,000 ounces at 1.9 grams per tonne. All of the mineralisation below that yellow line is, as I said, it's outside the current resource. The reason for that is just due to the drill spacing. So we're looking at going back in and we're drilling below that pit. Um, the resource is open. It's open a long strike, down dip, down plunge. So we're testing the plunge extent of that. And you'll see here, there's a really high grade um, pink zone. So that's over five grams per tonne. Um, the first drill hole that we drilled below that pit down plunge, um, one of the best results we got there was 16 metres at 5.2 grams from about 200 metres vertical. So very, very high grade 
and it just highlights that that resource um, will keep going and we expect a lot of that resource to come into the um, the upgrade with some further infill drilling. We recently discovered as well this uh, new load which is 200 metres south of the pit. Um, we're calling it the Orion load. Again, that's open down plunge and a long strike. Um, we stepped out 80 metres, we hit another zone out here. So it highlights that that mineralisation is continuing um, down plunge. So looking here, we're looking at Lord Nelson. This is in the long section looking east. Um, you can quite clearly see that that mineralisation is just plunging down to the southwest. Um, it's abruptly cut off there. That's just limited by the drilling. Um, there's no further drilling at all to the to the east there at the depth that we're looking at. It's a very, very shallow resource. Most of those resources, as I've said, it's sitting um, above about, about 200 metres depth and highlighting there that resource boundary. So you can see there's quite a lot more resource that we expect to fall into that into the resource category with um, with further drilling. Um, the exciting thing to note about this is um, 12 months ago, the resource at, at Lord Nelson was um, maybe a little over 60,000 ounces. There was a single drill hole 200 metres to the south, uh, which was grading about two metres at six grams. We, um, and this is when the bid was, first bid from, from Middle Island was going on. We um, we decided to, to step out. Uh, so we did a 40, 80 metre step out hole. We hit um, 12 metres at three. Um, the reason we did that, we wanted to see if that mineralisation continued. So we hit 12 at three. We followed that up with a further hit of 23 at 3.8. And that grew into the, that um, new load, um, which um, it certainly is an oxide, but then goes down to that fresh rock as well, um, which we're now calling Orion. And the reason I highlight that is um, if you see just right to the, um, the uh, right hand side of your screen or to the just further down to the, set, the south, there's a couple of historic holes, which Troy did hit. Um, that was some very uh, some shallow RC holes, but that's how we saw Rot Orion, or that's how Orion looked to us about 12 months ago. So we're really excited about this corridor. We've extended the mineralisation um, at Lord Nelson um, to over a kilometre. It's still open, and um, and there's lots more drilling to do along that corridor. So this is. Um, Again, back to a plan view, and you're seeing this granite diorite. We're, we're focusing on the next kilometre um, down from um, Orion. So it's over two kilometres now. This is the, we, um, we raised 5.5 million um, a couple of months ago, and that's basically now focusing on a 30,000 metre drill program. So it's the largest single program that the company's ever undertaken. Um, some very, very wide spaced, 80 by 80 metre drilling. We're focusing on that contact we're following up on some historical Troy, uh, Troy results, and I think we're quite excited about what we what we expect to get there. Um, again, this is the, the the corridor highlights the entire three kilometre corridor. What you're seeing here, we've we've taken the geological interp, we've overlaid that with the structural um, interp we've had from all the, the aeromagnetic work. Again, we've overlaid that with all the drilling that's historical drilling, and you can see where those cross cutting structures are correlate to the contact between the ultramafic and the granite diorite. And that's where our main targets are. So it runs down that entire three kilometer corridor. So the one slide, if there's anything I'd like you to take away from this presentation, it's this slide. It's probably my favorite slide in the whole presentation. What we're looking at here on the left, it's the entire property now. So about 800 square meter footprint. This is the three kilometer corridor here I was talking about. The um, image here on the left shows all the drilling that's ever been done over the entire property. And the image on the right just shows all the drilling that's deeper than 100 metres. So it really, really has been unscratched. It was pretty amazing for an entire greenstone belt in Western Australia, not really to be tested appropriately between deeper than 100 metres. So just in summary, sorry, um, I might be running over time a bit, but uh, why invest in Alto? We've got five and a half million dollars in cash. It's the strongest balance sheet position we've been in quite some time. We've got a 30 kilometre drilling program underway. We've got a dominant ground position, 800 square kilometres over an entire greenstone belt. We've got a growing resource at 331,000 ounces. You'll see that resource growing further next year. The whole property has been really, has been untested below 100 metres depth. And we've got multiple targets. I haven't even spoken about the number of brownfield and greenfield targets we've got on there, but there's a numerous targets which we'll be um, introducing back into the market over the coming, coming weeks and, and months. So um, that's it from me. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew.